Today we're exploring two popular Shishugi Bon techniques. Stick around and find out why one is just a little different than the other. What's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today we're talking Shishugi Bon. So the original series that we put out has done a lot of people a lot of good and answered a lot of questions. However, over the last couple months, we've noticed a few comments that have said that it's too many steps, that you can achieve the same look with less steps, and so therefore you're just wasting time and energy and everything else. So I wanted to cut up a few samples and try it. So today we're gonna try both techniques my way and the other way. So if you stumbled across this video and you don't know what a Shishugi Bon finish is, this, and to be fair, this, is what I'm talking about. Essentially what we're doing is we're applying heat and flame to the face of a piece of wood, and then we may or may not brush that char back off. The end result is a contrast of color where you get dark and you get color, or at least light colored wood. So before we can color, we have to burn. So real quick, I'm gonna show you the differences in burning. I'm gonna speed a lot of this stuff up so you guys don't have to sit through too much, but essentially, this is what is considered the easy way. I have the heat set to real low. I'm just gonna go until the wood starts to color into a blackish brown. In the second way, I'm gonna do a similar fashion, but I'm gonna keep burning it until I basically turn it into a piece of charcoal. Now on the first piece, I'm not going to sand it, I'm not gonna brush it or anything else because there's nothing to brush. But on the charred piece, I'm gonna take this brush in the drill, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna scoop out all that loose char that's in between the hardened grains. And I'm gonna dig it all out of there and clean it up. And this is what we're gonna be left with. Now at face value, these two do look the same. And what's really difficult is seeing stuff on video or seeing stuff online, it's really hard to get a feel for how something feels for a texture or a, a dimension or a depth. So to do my best to try and explain this, I think we should first take a look at how stain works with wood to begin with before we can figure out how it works with a piece of wood that's been lit on fire. My first sample is gonna be Verithane Vintage Aqua. And you can see when I start to wipe it down right there, that's grain, that yellowish brownish that's coming back through. So that's the hard wood grain peeking back through the stain. So next up is this Minwax Cherry, and to be fair, it doesn't really look very cherry-y, but again, wipe it back down. Now this one wasn't really a fair example. This is gonna be blue dye stain. I'll use this stuff quite a bit. It's not really the same thing as a regular stain, but again, as you can see, when you wipe it back down, it's not going to absorb as much of that blue, although this one did fare pretty well. And last but not least is going to be Verithane Ebony. I figured Ebony would have the best chance of soaking into the grain a little bit and providing not so much contrast. But as you can see, as I wipe it down a little farther, that grain starts to pop back through and reveal its ugly head. Now I know some of you at first might be thinking, well, yeah, dummy, if you wipe the stain back off, of course it's not gonna set. Well. I agree with you, if you wipe the stain back off, it's not going to set. In fact, that's a popular way of staining, is to stain and then wipe back off right away so that you don't get as much absorbed into the material itself. Another way is to actually stain the whole thing and just let it sit there and do its thing. There's a few different ways. My computer desk and my filing cabinet both have been stained, one with black and one with something I don't remember, that I stained them, I put a nice even coat of stain on there, and I let them sit, and I didn't wipe it back down. Now what you have to remember is that with this stuff, you're gonna actually wipe it back off, and so that's why I'm doing the test the way I'm doing them. So now let's go back to these two pieces, and we'll take a look at what happens when you apply it to the burnt wood. Now first I'm gonna start off with our burnt piece. This is not the one we brushed, it's the other one. I'm gonna set it aside, I'm gonna work on the one we brushed. Go ahead and fill all the little grooves and the gaps. You'll notice right now there's a bit more texture. So I'm gonna let this sit for three whole minutes, or close. And I'm gonna wipe off that first one again to make it a decent amount of time in between. And you can see right here, that's that grain popping through. But you notice what's kind of interesting is that the grain itself is almost a blue color and then the rest of it is black. Well, kind of. 
Now we'll move on to the burn and brush piece. And now you can see there's a difference here. Here you have some of the charred grain coming through and then you have some of the unburnt grain popping through as well. So you're getting a contrast of color there. And you can tell I'm working so hard to wipe it up because there's a lot of stain that goes down into the grooves. When you brush it out, you're brushing in between those dark lines and you're creating little, little valleys in there that stain likes to build up in, which is totally fine. But I wanted to wipe as much of it as I could so that this was a somewhat fair comparison. And there we have them side by side. You can see the difference in texture as you go along where one has those ridges and valleys as you dip between the rings and the other one's nice and flat. The one on the right didn't take stain nearly as well. The one on the left took a lot of stain, but you end up with two totally different looks by the time you're done. Now, of course, this all comes down to which one is better. And I can't answer that for you because I'm not the one doing the job that you wanna do or trying to get the look that you're trying to achieve. Now, I personally believe that this way looks a little bit nicer, but that's me and that's my eyeball. I see a lot of people that use this way and they really like it and that works for them and people seem to like what they do. So I'm not trying to say that one is better than the other or anything else. I'm trying to put out what the difference is. So for people that say that the way I do it has too many steps, it's too involved, it's a waste of time, you can do the same with this other way. Uh, you can't, you can't do it the same as you can with this way. Again, this is not bad, this is not bad, not one's better than the other. That's a personal opinion. I will say that this way and this way are two totally different things and there's no possible way to achieve the same look without going through all those steps. So, rant over. I just figured I would show you guys what the difference is. There are some steps involved, but if you wanna put in the time and experiment a little, that is the result that you will get from it. Anyways, thank you so much as always for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video.